Hello everyone, I'm Lotter Hospital 1 and welcome back to Final Fantasy 14. <laughs> I don't exactly have anything Christmassy on Okaru, but I have the Santa hat, so this will have to do, and I have the uh, the new minion that you get from the uh, Star Eye event. My my tiny squirrel with the Santa hat on its head. Anyway, um Tataru uh, told us last time that uh, she has information about the Sultana, so let's get to it. General Rabban says they may have uncovered the Sultana's whereabouts. And he wants you, by which I mean both of you, to go to the Waking Sands right away and help with the investigation. Come, Kaharu. Pressing though Ishgar's plight may be, our presence here will not serve to hasten the Mana Cutter's completion. Let us return to the, to the troubled lands of Thanalan and land what aid, aid we may. Tataru, have our friends of the congregation send a message to Astinian. Tell him we have identified a solution to our problem and that it may take some time to repair. As you wish, Master Alphino. <laughs> God damn it, Briar! Yes, that's me! I am in the Santa hat. It's the only thing Christmassy I have on, on Kaharu, okay? To the waking sands, warrior of light. Tis past time while thou was delivered from the from this darkness. <laughs> Pray return to the waking sands. <laughs> Pray return to the waking sands, Briar. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not ex not. Why? It's the Santa version of, of the nutkin. It's the squirrel, not a nutkin. <laughs> oh my god, Briar. for coming. Hi, Robot. How you doing? No thanks are necessary, General. I trust your recuperation continues apace. I cannot complain. Thanks to Higiri and her ministrations, I've regained much of the strength I lost during my imprisonment. I can't ask Thancred. I'm not in full seven's word yet. I gather you have made progress in the search for her grace. Aye, some good fortune at last. A few days past, Dulala informed us that a sizable shipment of alchemical supplies had been delivered to the palace. Curious. With Papa Shan's assistance, I set out to ascertain the source and nature of the shipment. My inquiries led me to Frondale's frontistry. There, I learned that an order had been placed for a curious substance designed to sustain patients trapped in death-like slumber. An invention of the former head alchemist, apparently. Curious. A death-like slumber? This cannot be a coincidence. It lends some weight to Dulala's claims, I. Her grace is likely somewhere within the palace, a bed but alive. Before making any attempt to extricate the Sultana, however, it seemed prudent to learn what manner of substance was used to induce her torpor. To that end, I made inquiries as to the whereabouts of the one most like to have administered it. The lady in waiting, Meriel. We sent for you as soon as we learned of her location. All that remains is to apprehend the woman. We shall find our cat's paw in the Silver Bazaar. Of course. But we must tread carefully. The market is not the bustling place it once was, and someone is sure to mark our coming. Should they inform the monetarists, we'll have a fight on our hands. We must be prepared for the worst, and being short an arm, I thought it wise to take another in its stead. <laughs> what say you, warrior of light? Will you lend me yours? Yes. Oh, sh okay, sure. Why not? <laughs> then I pity the bastard that stands in our way. 
Come, my friend. For Nanamo and for Ulda. Let's go. Yugi! Our target is Meriel, the Sultana's former lady in waiting, woman of Midland of Midlander heritage. I am told you two the two of you have met. Our sources indicate that she left the palace shortly after the incident, and quietly rejoined the dwindling population of the Silver Bazaar. I suggest we begin by questioning the market's residents and confirm that Meriel is still in hiding there. Of course, I can just fly there now, which makes traveling there just so much easier. Oh, there's a platform here. I don't think this was here before. That's new. I'm assuming that's a lighthouse. Miriam? Ah, she's here. Left the city for good, she says. Barely leaves her house though. Hmm? It's the closest one to the market to the market entrance. What can I do for the Silver Bazaar's favorite adventure? Looking for Mariel, you say? If you're hoping to lure her back to lure her back to Old Da, you may as well give up now. The city's done the girl's done with city life. I do I know of any returning residents? Gods, don't tell me they're starting to come back. My masters will not be pleased to hear of this. Look at that girl drink. Ah, uh, she's just chugging that thing. Meriel, the Sultana's former lady in waiting. I know no one of that name. Pray excuse me. Hi, General Alden. How you doing? Yeah, you're cornered now, lady. We will have the truth from you, girl. Mayhap it would be better coming from me. Hey, little Rito, how you doing? You're an asshole. Lolorito, you best talk fast. As you know, Telegi Adelegi's Cartano Reclamation Bill was no more than a facade. 
a means to get his grubby little hands on that Allegan monstrosity Omega. Yeah, yeah, we know this. When he learned of Nanimo's intention to abdicate, however, he was forced to amend his plans. Suddenly, assassination seemed the most promising way to further his ambitions. I am told Teleji had discovered a maid in whose veins ran the blood of House Thorn. A new, more pliable puppet to sit the throne. Could have caused an uproar, of course, but few could have contested her claim. Wow. Twas plain that Teleji's wild machinations had outgrown our ability to control them. So I decided to usurp his scheme and left the fool to seal his own demise. And what of Nanamo? Oh, I have no desire to harm her grace. Twould profit me little to destabilize our government. Thus did I employ young Mariel here to administer a potent sleeping potion in place of a poison. You should know, General, that your dear friend Ilbert was fully aware of my plan. I had him lie about the assassination as a means to prime your rage against Teleji. We weren't entirely sure how you would react, but things went rather better than expected. Ugh. You conniving little worm! You had your claws in the Crystal Braves before their first recruit had sworn to serve! But of course, when a new game begins, tis only prudent to have a piece on the board. Ilbert was mine. Truth be told, a significant proportion of the Braves' initial endowment was also mine. With such large sums moving about, twas a rather trifling matter to disguise my own contribution. Oh, Ralph, no angry. Ah, Ilbert. Hmm. I secured his services with a promise to support his cause once my authority had been solidified. I swear, the man thinks of naught but prizing Alamigo from the grasp of the Empire. Unlike you, General, the poor fellow seems quite unable to forsake the land of his forefathers. Mayhap, that's why he called you a traitor to your people and a disgrace to your homeland, amongst other things. What was it he always compared you to? Uh, oh, yes, an overgrown lapdog begging for scraps at the Sultana's table. <laughs> oh, how we laughed. Alas, Ilbert's entertaining little outbursts eventually gave way to wearisome tirades, and the zealous brute became rather unruly. I had no wish to see you executed, you understand, but he would not take no for an answer. Rest assured, his employment with me has long since ended. Which brings us neatly to the present. What say you, General? Both you and the Sultana are alive. We have one corpse and one fugitive. And preparations have been made to restore your good name. Shall we cry quits and start again with a blank ledger? Hmm? I, I, I know I've said, I said this at the end of a round of one. We're going through the cutscene in order. But as slimy and as backhanded as Lolorito is, I'm pretty sure at the most he wanted to do... Considering he knows how important the Scions, the Warrior of Light, and Rabon are to keeping the, um, keeping the realm's peace. And how important they are to making sure that everything goes smoothly. I'm pretty sure at worst he would have had them locked up. Just long enough to make, to, until everything was a, until they had more control on everything, everything was settled down. And then they would have proceeded to help clear their names. But of course there are things going out of his control that he couldn't exactly 
keep a tight hold on and <sighs> but this whole thing is still incredibly stupid Lolorito the hells we will do you honestly expect me to forgive and forget after all you've done you're guilty of high treason stay your blade master Alden you yourself are not innocent or have you forgotten your own crime in executing Teleggi Adeleggi without trial? Though you acted out of loyalty to the Sultana, such deeds are in violation of both the word and spirit of the law. If you would, Lord Lollorito? This potion will wake the Sultana from her slumber. Consider it a gesture of conciliation. You will find her grace resting comfortably within her private chambers. Should you doubt my word, I shall willingly accompany you to the palace as your hostage. Not your motives, Lollorito, but you saved the Sultana's life, and for that, you have my gratitude. We still don't like you, though, Lollorito. Rauban Aldin. You are hereby reinstated as General of the Immortal Flames. The citizens of Uldar shall once more be united under Nanamo Ulnamo, and together we shall usher in a new age of prosperity. What? Why are you yelling at me? <laughs> You're just doing it to yell, weren't you? Okay, Alpha no! By the twelve, I feared Lola Rito's arrival would her would herald another bloodbath. Little did I suspect that he of all people would gift us the means to rouse Sultana. They keep getting oh oh uh which one? Which one? Um, if you if we're going for one from the Mog Station, you the choir tire is quite nice. Um, so is the Starlight attire. Uh, where where is the one I'm thinking of? The, there is a particular jacket that I absolutely adore. Where is it? Armor. Starlight celebration. The starlight robe, that's it. That's the one I that's the one I like. The starlight robe is always a good one to go with. But for non uh mog station items, I can't help you. <laughs> Just basically, I guess, something warm. 
you know, something that would be good for cold. That would work. Just dye it red. You'll be fine. <laughs> Shall we also make our way to Old Doth? I should imagine Bartholomew has been instructed to admit us. To admit us. Blip 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 blah. To Old Doth! Away! Did that with the high house bustle? Doesn't the high house bustle like come pre-dyed red already though? You didn't have to dye it. Chamber of Rule, let's go. <laughs> run, Kaharu, run! Flame General Ralbon mentioned you might be you might be coming. This please, this way if you will. There she is. Welcome back, Nanamo. I was having the longest dream. Tis time to wake up, Your Grace. Another day begins in Thunalan, and the sun blazes bright upon the sands. She's wearing the cryo hair. <laughs> her grace is awoken. The palace physician assures me she is none the worse for her slumber. Cryo doesn't have pigtails, though. She has a singular ponytail. I believe her grace will soon resume her plans to place the government of Ulda into the hands of its citizens. Whatever path she chooses to take, I shall walk it with her. And we shall tread slowly, lest the nation be unsettled in our wake. Grace's compassion is a shining beacon to us all. But what our city truly thrives upon is competition. No, um, Nanamo still had her pigtails. You just couldn't see the other one because of the way the angle was in that screenshot. Tis in the struggle against our rivals that opportunities are seized and fortunes made. 
And with the Empire on the offensive once more, now would hardly seem the time to turn our system of government upon its head. He does have a point, though. He does have a point, though. Are you privy to new intelligence, my lord? <laughs> I would hardly call it new. Remind me, what was the name of that enormous Imperial warship which met its end in Mordona? Oh, wait, I have it. The Agrius. Yes, well, it would appear that the Galeans have been hard at work on another such vessel. Hold on, I need to check something. Yeah, I forgot to turn off my VPN. It's off now, so I won't lose my internet while I'm <laughs> streaming. How close are they to completing this ship? Is it operational? Its maiden flight was a success, I hear. I should imagine <laughs> Emperor Varys is eager to see how it performs in battle. Look, I turned it off now, so I won't DC, okay? My lords and ladies, I move that it is time to repair the damage caused by Telegi Adelegi and prepare our great nation to repel the Empire once more. Card <laughs> don't send <laughs> Go feed the cat, Briar. It is well that the Sultana has awoken. The Syndicate yet needs to put its house in order, but would seem the worst of the confusion has passed. <laughs> you always yell at me. <laughs> Uldar has taken control of its future, and I must do the same. You go, Alphano. I have decided to disband the Crystal Braves. Among the recruits, there were those who supported our order's goals and convictions with all sincerity. Tis my hope that these loyal men and women will choose to remain our allies in the battles to come. As for those who sided with the traitor, Ilbird, they shall be hunted down and held to account for their crimes. It is my earnest hope that they will surrender themselves peaceably when the time comes. Though I think it unlikely. Ah, my all-conquering crystal braves. The model army meant to pave the way for a single unified grand company of Eorzea. That so high an ideal should be brought so low. I need not tell you how deeply the betrayal stung me. Yet I see now that it was mine own naivety and pride which allowed the braves to fall prey to corruption. As ever, it is to your own shining example that I turn for inspiration. Like you, I mean to stand firm in the face of hardship and give mine all for the cause. Let us resume the search for our missing comrades, that we might come together to shine the light of dawn across the realm once more. The role of Crystal Brave Commander suited me ill, and I shall play it no longer. Henceforth, I shall be no more or less than Alfino, proud member of the Scions. Aww. Okay, I can't take Scar seriously with that hat. Hold on, I, I have to change it back. I'm sorry. I can't take you seriously with the Santa hat on. There we go. I blush to speak thus of mine inner turmoil. But the fact remains, there is no woman alive in whom I would rather confide. Were it not for your shining example, I might never have emerged from beneath the pall of my des of my despair. Aww. Hmm. Still no word from Master Garland. I hope this man cutter of theirs is nearing completion. I am assured that her grace will make a full recovery. I, and Ilda too, shall flourish once more. General Raubon and his colleagues have matters well in hand, I believe. 
Lady Yagiri, a question, if I may. I believe your people have been keeping a close, a close watch on the Crystal Braves. Might you know how things stand at the Rising Stones? Ah, yes, of course. You'll be pleased to know that the, that the third unit Braves abandoned Revenant's toll when they learned of Captain Ilbert's defeat. The only blue uniforms to be seen there now are those worn by soldiers loyal to you, Master Alphano. To me? I see. I am grateful to hear that at least some of our members were true to their oaths. Ere we, ere we return to Ishgard, I must go to the Rising Stones and thank these stalwarts for their service. They shall be my final act as Crystal Brave Commander. Will you join me, Kaharu? You were there at the company's inception. Tis only fitting that you be present at its end. And I would appreciate the support. Two more Dona! Away! Uh, this way. God damn it, squirrel! <laughs> You're in the way! Got down a briar. <laughs> Commander, you're alive. And Gahar too. I need scrap through. <laughs> That's a... really, really briar. <laughs> Really, Briar? <laughs> My splendid Crystal Braves, I have wronged you, all of you. My promises of glory and salvation have brought you naught but blood and betrayal. Bah! You do not hear us complaining. Twas a sight messier than expected, I, but we was still fighting for the freedom of all, just like we swore. Ain't that right, mates? I. You humble me. I am truly blessed to have such steadfast comrades. It is well with the mo it is with the most profound regret then that I must That's enough of that, Commander. We know what even a mind to say, and we ain't having none of it. We talked it over oversee, and we're all agreed. You can take our uniforms and strip us of our ranks, but we won't be no less of a company. But the Crystal Braves the Crystal Braves may be finished, but the ideals upon which the company was founded live on. They bind us to each other, and to you. Commander, Alphano, our minds are made up, so you may as well get used to it. Let us help the Scions. Let us help you find Minfilia and the others. My friends... After all that's happened, I know not what to say. Oh. Oh, Alpha no. Pray excuse me. I thought it. I thought my tears spent. Oh, he was crying. <laughs> my grandfather used to say that one could measure a man by the consistency of his comrades. Mayhap I am the exception which proves the rule. Nay, do not protest. I know that I am not worthy of their loyalty, Kaharu. But as Thaliak is my, is my, but as Thaliak is my witness, I shall do everything in my power to earn it. Yeah. <laughs> He did. He did. I must speak of future plans for the remaining graves. Any information we uncover on the missing scions will be need will need be 
will need to be shared with their allies across the realm, specifically Uriage in the Waking Sands and Tataru in Nishgard. While we are, are while we are organizing our various channels for communication, I would ask that you call upon Master Garland at the manufactory. I will join you in Ishgard as soon as I am able. Ooh, that's so good. Anyan. Oh, look at them! Look at them all! This place is a freaking mess. Hold on! This place is a- Oh, this poor- This place is a mess! No! Why is it a mess? Effie, Effie, Effie me? Effie me? Effie me! How you doing? I am not even going to try to pronounce your name. No, <laughs> son, why you no clean? <laughs> Alright, let's go back to Ishgard. Yeah, the... Uh, this must have been the state that they found it in. Honestly. Ergumas. Ergumas. See, this, this is why I have Friar. She helps me pronounce things. <laughs> Here comes. Sid, can we go and in, go into the air yet? Garu, how oh, there's seven health to do it? I was just about to send for you. We have but this moment we have but this moment completed the man cutter's first successful test flight. A few minor adjustments that you'll be ready to go. While we see to the finishing touches, we might want to pay a visit to Portal Manor. A dragoon by the name of Estinian was looking for you. Uh but uh, last vigil. <laughs> Friar Friar it's Astinian. It's the version of Astinian that you like. <laughs> <laughs> you have fulfilled your obligations to the old dons, then. Mistress, Mistress Ataru has been keeping me apprised of the situation. Estinian, when he was still sexy. <laughs> Once I learned that these mana cutters of Master Garlands were nearing completion, I saw no reason to tarry in the mists. For the present, Nekot seemed content to remain in the airy, plotting his revenge. Might might not this be the, an apt moment to unfold our plans to Sir to Sir Emmerich? I think we have kept him kept him in the dark long enough. <laughs> I don't have a type you do. <laughs> Your type is is uh is guys in spiky armor. That is your type. <laughs> I'm afraid I can't help you with that one, Briar. I'm afraid I can't help you with Zeta. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I know I did. <laughs> I have no regrets. <laughs> All stands ready, Lord Commander. <laughs> uh, the moment has come then. 
<laughs> Pray excuse my lateness. I paid a brief visit to the workshop to inquire about the mana cutters. The engineers assure me that they're ready. You were happily hating Xenos until I threw the Amnesia Xenos, uh... <laughs> Amnesia Xenos at you, at you, I know. <laughs> I did not need my eye oh, eyes open. <laughs> Too bad! Now you get to live with it. <laughs> For Master Alphino's proposal, we never would have attempted to parlay with the dragons. And what harmless creatures are you going to be murdering, Briar? <laughs> Garly! <laughs> AKA Garly! <laughs> Oh, does this mean you're doing the uh, MSQ roulette? Though our negotiations yielded little, our expedition with Lady Isar taught us much. You took an unimaginable risk. I could scarce believe the tale Astinian told. I. Tis true that many of our countrymen would sooner die than join hands with the heretic's mistress. But twas through that most unlikely of alliances that we came to speak with Reisvelger. Wait. If, if you're not doing that, what were you actually doing? A conversation that went rather poorly, as I recall. In this instance, the journey was more important than the destination. Had we not slain Nidhogg's consort, Tiamun, and put the Great Worm on his guard, the Dravanians would have arrived at Ishgard's walls long ago. Aye, that they would. Full grateful am I for every hour of respite your actions have afforded us. Thanks to you, our defenses are much improved. Tis but a pity they won't be enough. You were in Gollumald, Gollumald weren't you? You were in Garlemald, weren't you? <laughs> God damn it, Briar. An assault upon the area represents the city's best chance of survival. Is that not so, Astinian? I am under no illusions. Nidhogg's might is legendary. But with his eye in my possession, I can stifle his strength at the source. Victory will be hard won, even so. And I shall be glad indeed to have the Warrior of Light at my side. You shall have my blade as well. There are more of these mana cutters to be had, yes? Briar, look, it's your husband! <laughs> Briar, it's your husband! Lord Commander, no! How can I, a proud knight of Ishgard, stand by and do naught while an outsider risks life and limb for our homeland? I swore an oath to protect this city. <laughs> Pray leave the slaying of dragons to dragoons, Sir Knight. Your duty to command the city's defense is no less vital. Should we fail and Nidhogg slip through our grasp, who then will hold the walls against him? Will you leave Ishgard in the hands of the Holy See Zealots? There are others. Who but you has the authority and the standing to orchestrate a city-wide defense? I do not, and neither does the Warrior of Light. That is why it is our place to fight, and yours to remain here, Lord Commander. What? You too, Master Alfino. 
By the Fury. You have shown some promise, but this adversary is far beyond your skills. <laughs> and now Istidian is having to dad everybody. <laughs> Your candor is appreciated, Sir Dragoon. I shall remain then and cheer you from afar. Also, can I just point out, like, how tiny Alphino is next to Astinian? <laughs> he tiny! Well, my friend, it would seem I have discouraged the last of the volunteers and claimed the task as ours alone. But if any alive can best this worm, tis surely we too. I have pricked Master Alphino's pride, I fear. But I but had I been less forceful, the boy would have insisted on accompanying us to the airy. Do not think me blind to his talent. With more with a few more campaigns under his belt, I have no doubt that Alphino will make a fine field commander. But one does not practice on an adversary such as Nidhogg. We shall be hard pressed enough without the added worry of carrying a novice. Estidia just casually dadding everyone into staying that does does that needs to stay. <laughs> I love it. We have tarried long enough. Let's call upon Master Garland and take possession of the mana cutters. Uh, where am I going? Going over here. Going over here now. I could have, I could have just taken the Ethernet shard. I really could have, but for some reason, I always have to run everywhere in Kugane and Ishgard in particular. <laughs> Friend, the cutters are ready. The cutters are ready when you are. The engineer's adjustments cost cost us a few sleepless nights, but we were, but we got there in the end. Which means you can get where you need to go. I tell you, these little beauties will tear through that wooden bear like a some cement drill through cottage cheese. What does that mean? I want what? And that, my friends, is a Garland Ironworks guarantee. You have our thanks. Come, Warrior of Light. The Dread Worm awaits. Well then, shall we go? I got nine minute wait time. That's that's great. That's wonderful. Stay in. Okay. Wedge. <laughs> Wedge, go get some sleep. now. Just sitting and waiting. Just sitting and waiting. Hello, squirrel. How are you doing? <laughs> hmm. 
What am I doing? What do I- Oh, it went from 9 minutes to 10 minutes. Thanks, game. Thank you so much. Hmm. I guess I just wait then. I don't like to do any side quests while I wait, because I did that all in my own time. They're treating chocobos down there. I never noticed that before. Look. They're training chocobos to fight. I never noticed that before. That's interesting. Go, chocobos, go! Go, chocobos, go! Oh, you get there from here. Okay. them. I know that's the Ishgardian barding. I don't know what the other one is wearing, though. Is that the Dragoon barding? That might be the Dragoon barding. Yeah, I think that's the Dragoon barding. That would make sense. Here we can. That's a dead dragon. De oh, there's two dead. There's dead dragons. <gasps> oh, the airy. Like I'm actually looking around while waiting for while waiting for the queue to pop, and just seeing things I never noticed before. There's dead dragons down there. There are dead dragons down there, Ryer. No, an Ishgard! No, I didn't! No! And it hung! Thanks, Asidian. I'll use that too. I think I, I reminded the others that they should eat food too. <laughs>
Okay. Well, at least I'm not healing, so I don't have to deal with this. Just healing all this anyway. I can't even... Can I heal? Oh, I can't heal at this level. Right. Neat. I can't trace at this level, though. Can I get that at level 64? boss. Uh, why did you do that? Okay, that was a new. That's understandable. Nope, take it here. There you go. you. There we go. Yay! Um, I don't need that. Whee! How do we not break our legs? I have no idea. the tank is making sure that we have everybody before uh, they continue onward. I, as someone who actually mains healer, I am very much appreciating this. <laughs> Make sure you have everybody before you go on ahead. What? 
Briar, who, who, who are you having this discussion with? What? Oh my god, Briar. <laughs> You can tell that, that, that I'm currently judging them. <laughs> All right. Wait, they did? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> if you want, you can throw them a link to my Twitch right now, and they can just come see the kind of chaos that we get up into. The other one. Now I start attacking. I feel like I should be worried because you're still laughing. <laughs> Remember when we 
tried so hard to see if we could get squished by the uh, these falling pillars, Briar. <laughs> we tried so hard and failed every time. <laughs> I'll take that. I don't need that, though. Up here we go. Wait, look! Briar, look! Look over here! That's some elegant tech over there! How did that get here? Duh. Duh. Okay, I can't exactly argue with that. Mm. I don't think any pieces of ass this law have broken away though. But it but Delamod would be a good explanation. Let's go see Astinian! targeting. Ah, oh, you are targeting me! <laughs> let me just, let me just, let me just, there we
the next one. There it is! Getting it to the tank. I don't need that. I don't. I won't need that either. <laughs> I just be a dragon. I didn't kill it. That's not my job, apparently. Here it comes. I looked like it hurt. <laughs> Go, Stinian. Gifted my people a thousand years of suffering. Now I gift you an eternity in darkness. Ow! Ow, my heart. Ow. <laughs> Back. 
Ah, yes, the past. They are ours, Lord Eldrath. The eyes of Nidhogg. Aye. The worm lies broken and my father is avenged. With the wellspring of his vitality thus denied him, Nidhogg shall not linger long in this world. But behold the terrible price we have paid. My sire is dead. So many brother knights slain. We traded our honor for the strength which now courses in our veins. And still we are forced to make such sacrifice. But not in vain, my lord. Trace Felger is the only great worm left in Dravania, and he dares not leave his lair. With Nidhogg's eyes in your possession, who now can challenge the might of Ishgard, ascend the throne, and take your rightful place as the ruler of our people? Where does he put those? We have no idea. Nay, my friend. I must forsake the mantle of king. Though Nidhogg be defeated, his wormling horde yet darkens the skies with wings beyond counting. As one who partook of Ratatoska's strength, it shall be my penance to bear a knight's arms until death grants me leave to retire. When that day comes, no prince shall perish, but a hell's bound hunter of dragons. But Lord Haldreth, what then shall become of the royal line? Think of your people, my lord. Without a king, who will the common man turn to in his hour of need? How will he find his way without your benevolent hand to guide him? I thank you, Sir Flavian and Sir Silvertrill, for dispelling my remaining doubts. With men of such wisdom and compassion in service to the realm, it is plain that Ishgard has no need of a king. But if you must bow to the demands of tradition, you need look no further than yourselves for one worthy to wear the crown. Fare thee well, my brother knights, my loyal friends. On these shoulders shall I bear the weight of my father's sins. With this lance shall I repay the debt accrued through our misdeeds. And thus he set off, never to be seen again. Sort of. What cruel jest has fate played upon us? Have we seized this desperate victory only to lose a king? We can but act as our lord has bid. We few who remain must divide between us the rulership of Ishgard and her people. Not I. My oath was to Lord Haldrath and he alone. If he is not to be king, then I would hang up my shield as well. Will you abandon us too, sir? I would wash my hands of blood and betrayal and take up an honest trade. Mayhap I shall serve ale instead of sharpened steel.
Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> We four, then. Photon. Hylanath. Dirinder. And Zemile. But four houses to rule all of Ishgard. The four noble houses that still remain in Ishgard. And what of the throne? We keep it empty. Until the day a king rises once more. We must assume the role of stewards. We shall shape our nation anew with a history of our own making, and let the truth of this dark day die here, upon the battlefield. you friend are you wounded I'm fine you have borne witness to history to the culmination of the first battle with Nidhogg the legend of Ishgard's founding tells that our ancestors were led to the land of Kurthus by the valiant King Thordon in the midst of their journey they came to a wide chasm where they were set upon by a great worm, Nidhogg. A furious battle then ensued, with Thordon leading the van. Though the brave king was slain defending his people, his son, Haldrath, the first Azure Dragoon, fought on undaunted. And with a mighty thrust of his lance, he gouged out Nidhogg's eye forcing the wicked creature into retreat. Thus, did this Eldritch Orb become a sacred treasure of Ishgard, lending its power to every knight deemed worthy to bear the title of Azure Dragoon. A rousing tale, is it not? Would that I could still believe it. But your vision, which we must accept as immutable truth, leaves no room for doubt. Save on one point. Yep. If Haldrath took both of Nidhogg's eyes, then how came this eye to be lodged in the worm's skull? I have an idea of, who, of how that happened. Look how big it is compared to me. It's as big as my head. Beneath every answer we unearth, another question lies buried. Wait, why are we telling Estinian to behave? What did he do? <laughs> Twas a fierce battle, but one I knew we would win. Your fame is well deserved, warrior of light. Full proud am I to have fought at your side. <laughs> I would fain return with all swiftness to Ishgard to inform the Lord Commander of our triumph. But we must first have words with Hreisvelga. There are parts of this tale that the worm has kept from us, and I would know wherefore. That is completely fair, dude. That is 100% fair. Nidhogg has fallen, my heart is yet heavy, and the stain of corruption pleases me not. When all has been put to rest, I must needs forge my armor anew. I can fly! But 
With Nidhogg fallen, none save Harry's Velvier remain to answer her questions. Let us trouble the worm again. It, and if Iceheart yet lingers at Zenith, all the better. I would have her hear the truth from the dragon's moth. It's from Puppet's Bunker. Oh, yes, yes. My, uh, my tiny squirrel. Where's my Santa? There's my Santa squirrel. Hold on. Uh... I can beckon him, and he comes and sits on my shoulder. This is my Santa squirrel. He's adorable, and I love him. Let's go. Um, I am going to take a quick stop at Azaf for uh, gear repair. Briar, Briar, go to the shame box. You have been banished to the to the shame box. Briar, you're banished to the shame box. <laughs> Actually, what an uh, if. See, I used to be in before made a shame box just for me because I kept using um, the lingering AOE uh, on Ninja and kept turning the FC house. So they made a shame box and put me in it. Hey, Yzael, how you doing? Twas you, was it not? The furious screams of the dragons carried far. You have slain Nidhogg. What more could you desire from this place? Will you not allow Hraesvelger to mourn the death of his kid in peace? Spare us your sanctimonious judgment, I Ice Maiden. We have a gift for the Great Worm. And a mystery that can no longer lie buried. <laughs> Combined, we make one whole brain cell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do. Lady Iceheart, the dragon Sangor has all but consumed your life and claimed many of your followers. Tis time you learn the truth of its beginning, the whole truth, that we may at last bring this bitter conflict to an end. Sound the horn, warrior of light. <laughs> they they literally had to stop selling it, yeah. <laughs> Vulgar. I have something of yours. You mean the moment I prized your eye from his head? Here, you, you can have it back now. I believe this belongs to you, good sir. Eh, 
That's better. Oh, oh god, oh god, not again. He finally has death perception. The eye freely given. Which just fueled the thousand year war, did not help, thank you. Praise Vulgar, you just helped to fuel the Dragon Song War. I hope you realize this. Answer for that, Blackie. <laughs> Has easy on him. <laughs> it was yours. Your strength that sustained Nidhogg all these years. Yes, it was. Would that Haldreth had dealt the worm a killing blow. We do. We really do. And so you acquiesced. You surrendered your eye to Nidhogg, knowing full well the suffering he would inflict. This one so on in in air. That man return in air. Eskless Nizek. Liz Eskangan. I'm fine. Sick man in a man, strays 
So the chair cards now um, in Phasmophobia, they have. Do each does each card have a different effect? Because that sounds really interesting. Oh, I should put on the new armor I just got. It's rush. Oh, that sounds fun. Oh, oh, I like how this looks. Look at this. I like it. Anyway, Estinian! <laughs> Though he lifted not a single claw, it would seem that Hraysvog erect his own manner of vengeance against us. Was my life's goal to slay Nidhogg, but I find there is little joy to be had in its accomplishment. But you have rid the world of a hate-filled creature, and ended a bloody war in so doing. I lost my family to Nidhogg's flames, and was with fury in my heart that I took up the lance. Every blow I struck, I struck in the name of vengeance. We were not so different, he and I. I will not judge you for your deeds. I have not the right. Too many innocents have perished in the name of my greater good. Yet even with all that has passed, the tale is incomplete. It is indeed incomplete, Estinian. We are short a great worm's eye. Of the pair which Haldrith took from Nidhogg, only one is known to us, the one I bear. That is correct. What then became of the other? Why did Nidhogg, who had taken <laughs> such pains to prolong the Dragonsong War, suddenly decide to hurl his entire army against the walls of Ishgard? It's not just blood, he's covered in dragon's blood. Oh, that's not good. Lord Commander. Aye. The deed is done. Nidhogg is slain. What? In the city? A battle with whom? <laughs> <laughs> At once, Lord Commander. Hold firm till our return. Fighting has broken out in the city. Lord Emmerich was sparse with the particulars, but it seems some commoners threw open the gates to a force of heretics. I gave no order to attack. Are we to mark the end of the Dragon Song War by spilling the blood of our own? <laughs> Mayhap Baseball is right about us. Let us away, warrior of light. The people must be safe from themselves. Right behind you, Stinian. Wait! I would join you! There has been enough violence. I will appeal to my people in the city and make them see reason. That would be a good idea, actually. Come then, Lady Iceheart. Let us write the final chapter in this damnable war. Come, Yuzail, we away! Ah, it's these guys again. He's a winner already! <laughs> a small army of heretics has invaded the city, Your Eminence. But there is no cause for concern. A sizable contingent of our soldiers is already in place to repel the Dravanian assault. And the intruders will soon find themselves outnumbered and outmatched. Our plans proceed apace, then. Yes, your eminence. This unrest shall serve to feed the people's fear of the heretics and the dragons both. And lend renewed fervor to their prayers for deliverance. Very good. 
Grant our guests what time they need to sow a measure of chaos, then order the Temple Knights to crush them. Your will be done. The moment is at hand. Excellent. All shall soon be in alignment. <laughs> he lives in that chair. Okay. <laughs> it is time for the bringer of light to die. Yeah, you said that in Praetorium, and yet I lived through Praetorium. Where's your font? Shed. My lady, she has come. <laughs> Hear me, brothers and sisters. The war is ended. Nidhogg is no more. It is so! This adventurer and the Azure Dragoon laid the Great Worm low! <clears throat> the endless cycle of violence between man and dragon was born of our forefathers' treachery. You have followed me, bled with me, to bring this truth to light that we might all know peace. But Nidhogg is dead. Nidhogg is dead, my friends. He who bore such hatred towards Ishgard is dead. Let his hatred die with him, I say. Let us sheathe our swords and go in peace. Have we lost? No. No, my friend. Far from it. At long last, the peace for which we have so desperately fought is within our grasp. And I, for one, would not forsake it. What? Why am I being yelled at now? Peace? When they all sheathed their swords at once, that was such a weird sound. <laughs> Oh, that's right! That's right, because he had two Samadhi when he was going- when he was trying to seal, um, Shinryu. That's right! Seize the witch! Let none escape! Providing aid and succor to the wounded should be our first concern. Thank you, Hoshifant. If the heretics mean to observe the peace, 
then it would be folly not to do the same. That was rather too close for comfort, but it would seem that calm is returning to the streets. My mind, however, yet clamors with a thousand questions. You're, you return to Ishgard in the oddest of company, my friend. I will take this, thank you. Wait, was that? Yes. Excuse me while I land this. Do. That, my friends, was rather too close to comfort. Praise Halone things see, think, praise Halone that things did not end in bloodshed. I confess I was a little, more than a little dismayed to see you in the company of Lady Iceheart. Whatever is going on, Kaharu? <laughs> Beg pardon, you traveled to the Trading Mist together, along with Isthidian? Um, Kaharu is actually a full-grown adult. She she is on the small side for a female Zayla, but you... Blackie, you need to see what a full-grown male Zayla looks like next to a full-grown female. Like, max height, both of them. It's, it's insane, the size difference between the two. <laughs> Never was there a more unlikely alliance, nor one so magnificently effective. Nidhogg dead, the heretics pacified, father and Sir Emmerich must know of this. Let us break the news to them together. I will bring Sir Emmerich to Fortal Manor. Hmm. Yes, an excellent, an excellent suggestion. Very well. Kaharu and I shall await you there. It also doesn't help that uh, those two are Elizins, uh, so they're they're at, they live in a tall race. Uh, the Elzen are an actual tall race, which doesn't help. I'm tiny in Ishgard. <laughs> what? 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 What are you oh knowing about? I'm pretty sure I have a good idea of what you're oh knowing about, but tell me it. Yep, yep, that's why. What? 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 For... Oh, yep, yep, the fat cat. I'm a pet. <laughs> That's an actual minion you can get in the game. I do not have it on Kaharu. <laughs> Which I do I do not have the one you can ride either, unfortunately. <laughs> Halone, you are safe. <laughs> okay. My safety was never in doubt, Father. For I had the Azure Dragoon and the Warrior of Light by my side. I am I'm on neither, I'm on Marlborough. <laughs> we bring the most wonderful tidings. <laughs> the infamous Lady Iceheart, here in Ishgard? This is most unexpected. She has done much to quell the violence. The Inquisition may not approve, but we are glad of her presence. And with the Great Worm's demise, even our nation's more reactionary elements will have scant grounds to press for her immediate impeachment. But if you're going to show off the fat cat mount, shouldn't we go somewhere that isn't in Ishgard because you can't so unbounce in Ishgard? My thoughts exactly. Thank you, Emmerich. <laughs> what of the truth revealed to us by Hreisvalga? <laughs> that the origins of the Dragonsong War, a core tenet of Ishgardian faith, 
are quite unlike those depicted in the scriptures. <laughs> that lie was just the perfect timing. <laughs> <laughs> that men and dragons once lived together in harmony and that it was man's treachery which shattered the peace and plunged our peoples into war <laughs> oh my god the same scripture also describes the origins of the high houses were it exposed as false the legitimacy of our rule would be called into question if both highborn and lowborn can trace their ancestry to Thorden and his knights twelve. But yeah. a single sip of dragon's blood is required to confirm their lineage. <laughs> if the Holy See knew of this and chose to remain silent, their crimes are grievous indeed. Regardless, this state of affairs cannot be allowed to continue. That timing was amazing. <laughs> Sir Emmerich, you cannot mean to raise this matter with the Archbishop. Pray consider what you are proposing. If the Holy See chose to conceal the truth for centuries, what reason would they have to reveal it now? At best, you will be branded a heretic in Clapton Irons. Then at least the Archbishop will have shown his true colors. <laughs> My friends, this war will never truly be at an end until the truth is made known. You must see what lies on the horizon if it is not. When ruled by fear of a common enemy, we were united. But now we have none. During the war, the highborn needed men to lead and the lowborn men to follow. Not anymore. Tis but a matter of time before the old order is called into question. Lady Iceheart will share the truth with her followers, and the Holy See will be powerless to stop its spread. The disenfranchised will rise up united, and blood will flow in the streets once more. Okie duck. I'll meet you there when I'm not in cutscenes. Emmerich, no! I know how this ends! A divided Ishgard will not survive. <laughs> Tread carefully, Lord Commander. My lady, is it wise to let him go? I sympathize with the Lord Commander's desire for reform. But to approach the Archbishop in this manner bespeaks an idealism to which I did not think Sir Emmerich prone. Though he comports himself as a realist, he has long dreamt of reform. It was that idealism which first drew me to him. That which made me swear an oath to serve. We must not think of ways to hinder his cause, but rather ways to aid it. Even should the Holy See cry heresy. You cannot mean... If the Lord Commander does not return from the vault at the appointed hour, I mean to go and fetch him. Add a girl, Lucia. Have care, my lady. Your words border on treason. Should they reach the wrong ears, you will be declared an enemy of Ishgard. That is a risk I am willing to take. Lest you forget, my lord, I am not born of this land. My loyalty is to the Lord Commander alone. But I speak only of what may come to pass. If the rumors regarding his heritage are to be believed, we have naught to fear. <laughs> Lies and slander. Yeah, I think you're talking about the manor servant that's just always kind of there. <laughs> no, if you look like underneath uh, Mistinian's arm, you can kind of see him. <laughs> Forgive me. There what he is. Are these? That Sir Emmerich is the Archbishop's bastard son. <laughs> Senior clergy are not permitted to marry and sire children. But even the holiest among us are not immune to temptation. 
I labor to believe it. Sir Emmerich is truly the Archbishop's son. No, the, the guy behind Edmont. I believe. <laughs> and, um, while all the, the rest of the Ellisons are, um, are full grown adults, Alpha Note Blackie is, uh, 16. <laughs> Alpha no is a baby. <laughs> he has never been publicly acknowledged as such. But the rumors have plagued him since childhood. That he rose to his current position, despite being despised as a bastard and accused of profiting from his father's influence, bespeaks the quality of his character. <laughs> it is my hope that on this occasion, the burden of his birth will work in his favor. Should our worst fears be realized, the Archbishop will not be so quick to execute his own flesh and blood, affording us time to mount a rescue. Bastard or trueborn, he is our nation's best hope. If the Holy See dares to threaten him, I shall lead the charge against the Vault myself. Estinian, no! Here, here. The future of Ishgard rests on Sir Emmerich's shoulders. I too will do mine utmost to aid his cause. Horshafat, no! Orshafon, be reasonable. A knight lives to serve, father. To aid those in need. The people need Sir Emmerich more than ever. And we may be his only hope. Orshafon, I know how this ends. Stop! There is no greater calling for a knight than to save the life of his fellow man. I swear to you, on the sigil of our house, that I shall do this and make you proud. Even you, <laughs> romantic, reckless fools, the lot of you. So be it. Make your preparations. Most of them survive. I'm not going to tell you which ones, though. I thank you all for your support. <laughs> Blackie, is this the guy you're in the back you're going on about? <laughs> is this the guy? <laughs> yeah, here, I'll give him a hug for you. There. Oh, hold on. I can do this better. There we go. There. He got a hug. <laughs> Your assistance is most welcome. I fear it will not be enough. Few as we are, we will struggle to reach Lord Commander. If we are to succeed, we must needs recruit others to our cause. Oh, wait. No. Alpha, no! Wait. I want to talk to Font first. Oh, that foresh foreshadowing. I hate it. Briar, I hate it! But how are we to carry out this, bo this bold endeavor? Even with an army of knights at our backs, a direct assault on the vault seems unlikely to succeed. You are correct, Master Alphano. Not even the assembled might of House for Tom and the Temple Knights would be sufficient. With support of another party, however, we may yet stand a chance. You speak of one other of of you speak you speak of one of the other high houses. Precisely precisely the opposite. I speak of revolutionaries rumored to reside in the room. Twas these disgruntled Ishgardians who opened the gates of our city to heretics, I believe. But of course, if their hatred of the Holy See drove them to such deeds, they might as well be persuaded to assist in Sir Emmerich's rescue, knowing the truth he would, he would lay bare. 
Such is my hope, Master Alfano, and I would have you and Kaharu reach out to them. As a temple knight and sworn servant of the Holy See, any overtures I make are doomed to fail. But as an outside, but as outsiders, the two of you might receive a warmer welcome. Very well. We shall seek out the leader of these revolutionaries and make our case. <laughs> my thanks, my thanks, Isinian. Will your brothers heed your command if you order them to stand aside? The dragoons have no love for politics, my lady. They will, they will gladly watch and wait while the highborn fight amongst themselves. How very wise. Kaharu, we should hurry to the Forgotten Knight. Tatayu may have ha, may have knowledge of, of the revolutionaries. <laughs> Alright, Briar, I'm I'm coming to you. Camp Cloud Top. Yes, we're, we're showing you the cat. Briar, where are you? Oh, there you are, I found you. Pet. Pet, pet. Show the cat, please. Blackie would like to would like to see the cat. That is the uh, fat cat mount that you can actually ride. Also, Blackie, I am going to put a screenshot in our shared uh, spoop um, uh, phasmophobia channel. This is a. I'm going to preface this. These are both Zayla and they are both max height. Just so you know. So they are both max height, male and female Zayla. <laughs> and again, same race. Again, same race. Both of them are maximum height. What, Briar? <laughs> Briar, I have to do more MSQ. Gaharu, Alphano! God, it's been worried. I've been worried sick. It's so good to see you. And you, Tataru. How did you manage to escape the chaos in the streets? Gibri. Oh my god. I don't know how to pronounce his name. <laughs> he thought to tie was the cat in boots. Wait, what cat in boots? What cat in boots? I'm confused. barricaded the doors until the heretics left. No one was harmed, thankfully, but what, if, what about you two? What came of your journey? You're not serious. What was Sir Emmerich thinking? I mean, the way you two talk about him, I wouldn't have believed 
Anyway, I've heard rumors of the people you're looking for, but I doubt they'll be of much use. Briar? Briar? Are you still going to run the vote with me? The only thing I can say with any certainty is that they're led by someone called the Mongrel. A queer moniker for if I ever, if I ever have heard one. But mayhap it will make the individual in question easier to find. Come, let us all make the inquiries below. <laughs> Briar, don't you dare! <laughs> don't you dare! <laughs> Okay, you're good. I still have an instance to do, and then we'll run the vault, okay? A mongrel? Not sure I'd catch your meeting. To a blue blood, all of us are dogs down here. You know, at some point you're going to actually do it, and I'm going to hate you so much. <laughs> eh? What's that? Speak up. I can't hear as well as I used to. I don't know a god something about the mongrel, but if I did, you can be sure I wouldn't tell you. Those th those children are throwing snowballs at me. You're missing terribly, might I add. <laughs> Briar, no. No, up or down? Oh, he's down. I always do this. I do this every time. Not a single shred of information, just as I expected. These revolutionaries would not have invaded, ca invaded capture for so long without the masses' complicity. Still, it is good to know that, that Tataru's ears are as sharp as ever. I will take that, thank you. Frustrating though it may be, we must press on. While I continue speaking with the people of the broom, why not go and see if if give 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 knows art of value. That's it. That's it. That's all you're getting from me on that guy's name. As the proprietor of the Forgotten Knight, surely he must have heard whispers of the of the mongrel before. We can only hope that he will be more forthcoming than the others. I think you just kind of see that I where I gave up trying to say that guy's name. <laughs> I just gave up. That's it. I'm done trying to pronounce that guy's name. Anyway. <laughs> You know, people long for a sympathetic ear, but they need to know that it comes with tight lips. Discretion, Kaharu. That's what my customers expect. If they don't get it, then I don't get them. That being said, I'm not without my sympathies. I've heard the tales, and I know you've done right by highborn and lowborn alike. Least I can do is point you in the right direction. But to do that, I'll need you to do something for me. So what happens is a hunter up on in the crow's ear who owes me a fair bit of coin. However, I've agreed to accept payment in fresh herbs. Can you go go and get them for me? Agreed? Who is texting me and why? Frog? What? Frog? Where? <gasps> Frog! Oh. Ah. <laughs> ah, it disappeared, Blackie. It left before I could see it. Okay, let's go here. Who the heck is texting me? 
Young, all young adults. Hey, we'll read that later. Come, tiny squirrel. We are almost there. There he is. Hello. You give me one. Gilly Brown's errand girl? Good, good. How's he doing? Same as always? Right, right. Any road, I hope he appreciates how much trouble I had to go through on account of his bloody herbs. Tell him to enjoy them while they last, because I doubt I'll be able to find any more next year. Alright, I got the herbs. Go back up here. Back to Ethernet Shard. Back to the Forgotten Knight. Let's go. Yep. What's that? Well, have you got them? Are you going to hand them over or not? There you go. This uh, this ought to do it. With a few other spe with a few other spices, I can make it just like she used to. There are a few things which can stir the hearts of men, like a sip of mulled wine. Share a glass with the right people, and who knows what stories they'll share. Now that I think on it, there's a woman who's rather fond of this blend. He, oh my God, he or that is her name, and she resides in the pillars. She's a maid servant to some novel, noble house or, or another. I forget. Anyway, be a shame if she didn't get to try this wine. Why not give her a bottle? Okay, I can just go straight, straight there from down here. Wee! Thunk. <gasps> here she is. Yes, I am he he Heatha. Beg your pardon, but do I know you, miss? I have wine for you. I I know the smell. This is the wine that girl used to prepare. Her special recipe. It must be decades since I last tasted this. Oh, the poor dear. Such a shame that she was taken in by that baron. He cut a dashing figure, I'll grant you that. Tall, slender, long of ear. <sighs> But those dazzling ruby eyes of his were filled with lust. It was not more than infatuation what she felt, but she convinced herself it was love, and he couldn't help but take advantage. But when her belly, belly started to grow, God, it's a scandal. I mean, tis not an uncommon occurrence, but, but that it was with the hero made it so much... Well, I needn't tell you. She was just discharged from his service, cast out and onto the streets, so much, like so much refuse. After she returned to the broom, we we drifted apart. I only learned of her death years later by chance. <laughs> Need to be more specific. Most guys look like that. <laughs> yeah, here they do. Anyway, we are going. We are going. And up the stairs. I said, how you doing? So the Almer's nobleman beds his maidservant, then casts her aside when the sea takes root. Not the most original tale, is it? Cold comfort for the women and children who live through it, though. Even the even the penitent can appreciate wine from time to time. Uh Take. I'm not even going to try. 
Take Gerald for, Gerald for example. Surely you've heard of him, no? He's a monk who's, who offers succor to the poorest of the poor in the broom. A man of many vows, but none which prohibit spiritus... Spiritus... Bever... Spiritus beverages. Good God, why was that so hard for me to say? Aye, if ever there was a man who deserves a drink, it'd be him. Okay, nope. Get I'm just getting people drunk at this point. <laughs> Hello, there's blessings upon you, miss. I, a gift for me? The scent. How reminiscent of a wine once made by a dear old friend. May her soul rest in peace. Forsaken by her family, she toiled tirelessly to feed and clothe her child. Yet, somehow she found time to help me tend to those in even worse circumstances. So compassionate she was, so full of love for her fellow man. <laughs> he almost did. Twas that love which gave her child strength to endure the scorn of other younglings. Ah, oh, that little girl, bless her heart. She couldn't help what she was. Eventually, she won them over, but those first few years were trying. Even more so when she had start when she, she had to start fending for herself. I remember the days she spent standing on the walls, raven black hair flowing in the wind, staring out, as if searching for her mother's face in the mists. Oh. <laughs> I'm back. She was a remarkable woman, Kaharu. Even after she was forced, everything she was forced to endure, she still remained hopeful for the, for the future, for her daughter's future. Some bonds are thicker than blood, but blood still defines us and divides us in the end. It's the legacy of our parents, Kaharu, and we can't escape it, no matter how hard we try. So the mom girl and her pups chose to embrace theirs, to proclaim it to all and sundry. If you can understand that, then maybe you can find her on your own. And now we go over here. <laughs> Hello, buddy boys! Still looking for your mongrel? Like I said before, take your pick. Plenty around if you know where to look. Or do you fancy someone specific? I am looking for a mongrel with ruby eyes and raven black hair. Oh, someone's got unusual taste. Freya can't help you though. Won't, rather. It's bloody obvious you ain't of the broom. Did you think I'd just tell you because you asked nicely? Look at those bunny boys. Except I think that one's a bunny girl. <laughs> Alright, where is Alpha now? Just bunnies being buns, indeed. One of them's crafting something, the other's watching the, that one craft something, and then the other's in a cutscene. Just doing bun things. Have you made any progress, Kaharu? Hmm, so our mongrel was born of an Elizabeth nobleman and a Hurian maidservant. Granted, it is no location, but it is far more information than, than we had before. Yes, now that her striking features are known to us, mayhap we need only remain vigilant. Where is Tataru? There must be a way we can draw the mongrel out into the open. Hmm, mayhap we should discuss this with Tataru. Speaking of which, where is Tataru? She- Oh, confounded. She won't blow to make inquiries of her own, didn't she? We must find her quickly, Kaharu. 
I have a, pre a premonition this is not going to end well. Alright, let's go see where Tataru ended up. She must be around here somewhere. I take it you've had no luck either. There she is! Ah! I'm sorry! I forget I said anything! Wait, down there! Isn't that Tataru? <gasps> Those men are chasing her! Quickly, Kaharu! After them! Where do you think you're going, Missy? I... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend. What's going on here? Excuse me, I believe that Lollifel belongs to me. What's it to you, boy? Piss off. Hold on, I've seen them around. They're in and out of House Four Tom's Manor all the time. Oh, I see. Skulking about at your highborn master's bidding, eh? Bloodhounds hoping to catch a whiff of heresy, is that it? No. You are quite mistaken, I assure you. We came here to help. And if you know what's good for you, you will let us pass. Haha! <laughs> Listen to the pups yapping. Come here, boy. I'll give you cause to yelp. Enough! Leave threatening women and children to our betters. We don't have the knack. There she is! Killed her! Lay a finger on the Blue Blood's pups, and you're like to lose the hand. And often I get called on by glorious heroes like yourself. So tell me, what have I done to deserve you? We have found her! Before you start, let's go somewhere a bit more private, eh? The Forgotten Knights, eh? <laughs> well, technically, yes, yeah, she was the one that found us, but, you know, details. <laughs> details. <laughs> Okie doke. Hilda!
So, while you're on your way to kill Nidhogg, you stumbled on some dirty secrets that the Holy See has been hiding for centuries. Yep, she's half Ellison, half here, hence why she's she looks like a here but has the point pointed ears. Hey, what are they on about? The high houses. And what makes a nobleman so bleeding noble? They trace their blood back to King Thorden and his Knights Twelve, the founders of Ishgard. But our friends here reckon we're all descended from the heroes of Eld. Highborn and lowborn alike. And so Sir Emmerich, Lord Commander of the Temple Knights, has gone to ask the Archbishop if he wouldn't mind letting everyone know. Is he simple? The old bastard will have him executed for heresy. Well, seems to me that's what the good sir wants. Seems he thinks a noble sacrifice will serve to prove his claims. We cannot stand idly by and allow Sir Emmerich to do this. Ishgard has need of him. Well, you've right. a good heart, I can see that. Willing to risk your neck for someone else even when his troubles ain't yours. But what's this got to do with me? If Sir Emmerich is imprisoned in the vault, we will need all the help we can muster to breach their defenses and rescue him. What in the hells? Oh. The unmistakable scent of heresy. Yeah, that's a good idea, Briar. And what do we have here? The honored guests of House Four Tom consorting with the Queen of Rats. Plotting insurrection, I shouldn't wonder. That won't do. Sickness is wont to fester and spread. It must be burnt out ere the infection takes hold. I reckon Sir would be happy to wield the irons himself. Well, so happens. I've got irons of my own. Go, Hilda! Such simple creatures, rats. Certain to attack when cornered. Wait, who's Sir Daisy? Let us step outside, my lady. In here, your toys could hurt someone. Oh, you mean Sir Daffodil! <laughs> No, we, we won't see him until the vault, Briar. Right there! No, don't follow me! Enjoying this way too much, Sharper. Sickness must be purged. That that's the one that he's the one that says sickness must be purged, right? Ooh. 
wear a mask like the rest of us. Boy, Chiffon! Oh, I see you. Filthy rats. Thank you, Alpha No. Oh, yeah, I was right to move away from him. There's no denying your gifts. A well-deserved reputation indeed. Enough! Hey, Lucia! Bastard. Nay, tis we who are lucky. Had we fought on, twas but a matter of time before our conflict claimed the life of an innocent bystander. <laughs> yep, that's exactly what he did. I thought the Heaven's Ward might come here as well. I was wondering what you were fire squirreling at. It's it's Alphindel's carbuncle, his ruby carbuncle. They came to the Temple Knights' headquarters. Aye. Sir Grinnow announced that the Lord Commander had been imprisoned under suspicion of heresy, and that the Heaven's Ward had been granted full authority in his stead. Then the Heaven's Ward now commands the Temple Knights. Oh, dear. Those still loyal to Sir Emmerich answer to me. Alas, that amounts to but half our number. The other half, who opposed his promotion to Lord Commander, have gathered at the vault as ordered. Bolster in the guard already, eh? If I didn't know any better, I'd say you were expected. I take it you're in charge around here? Hilda, and yes. The young master was just persuading me to join his lost cause. Convincing little beggar, isn't he? <laughs> well, he... Well, the carbuncle is made of pure ether, so I... I... Your passion moved me. A bit. That. And the fact that we're sick of living off the leavings of our betters. Considering the fact that a carbuncle is pure ether, that might actually be accurate. Because I don't know what ether feels like, so... If you've a mind to change things around here... Then we've a mind to join you. Briar, get your butt to the vault. We're about to go in. Let me guess. You're wondering why I chose the mongrel, right? It's because it's what I am, and I'm not ashamed of it. Not anymore. Besides, even my pure blood pups have more in common with me than the lords and ladies up on high. 
They, they none of them are well bred. Hell, some of their mothers were cast out on the spot after a spot of fun, same as mine. Story as old as time, and one we're sick of hearing, which is why we took up arms. Not that I mean to hold all the blue bloods accounted to account. Some have done right by us, I'll allow, like them in House Hiliarne. I don't know how to pronounce that name. That's okay. But enough talk. Your friend's still rotting in a cell. Let's not keep him waiting. Briar, you're not the one that has to watch the cutscene afterward. We've been working in secret to undermine the Holy See and the High Houses. That much I'll acknowledge. Well, you only get to watch it because I'm streaming it. But this nonsense is throwing us wide the gates for the heretics. But this nonsense about throwing wide the gates for the heretics is just that. Nonsense. If not you, then who? <laughs> you, you temple knights, of course. Reckoned it was your beloved Sir Emmerich's doing at first, but then I heard how he lost his head. My next best guess would ha would be the Heaven's Ward. That way, they'd have the perfect excuse to go door to door through the broom, slaughter the heretics and their sympathizers in one fell swoop. But the Heaven's Ward scheme did not account for Lady Icehart's intervention, and so they have been forced to improvise. A fine bloody mess, isn't it? But the die is cast, so what's the plan? We must avert divert the attention of the high houses away from the city, and to do that we need the cooperation of your allies in their service. And what makes you think I have friends in high places? You would be fools not to, given your goals. Lowborn knights are ideal recruits. Most swore fealty only out of desire for a better life. If offered an opportunity to shed the yoke and live for themselves, who among them would not, would not at least be tempted to take it? Where is the man eager to die for the cause he does not hold dear? But it, but it need not come to that this day. If they and their fellow knights are deployed afield to deal with a new threat, a massing of heretics, for example, then they will be unable to join in the defense of the vault. Hmm. Spread false reports of an attack to get him out of harm's way, you mean? The city will not soon forget the heretics' last assault. If the high houses believe another attack is imminent, They'll have no choice but to act. Can it be done? We can. Tr can we trick them into leaving Ishgard? Aye. Can we keep them out for long? Not bloody likely. Make sure you're ready. Make sure you're ready before I said word, because you won't get a second chance at this. Then it is decided. To the vault. The archbishop must be held to account. And the Lord Commander granted his liberty. Le -de -de. Hearken to me, everyone. We have two objectives. Rescue Sir Emmerich and apprehend the Archbishop. We will therefore divide our forces into two parties. Lord Harshafon Isinian, Master Alphano, and I will make ready to breach the underground jail in and search for the Lord Commander. We will not move, however, until a second party has entered the vault. I speak of your party, Warrior of Light. For this plan to succeed, you will need to fight your way into the highest levels of the vault, even onto the Archbishop's private chambers. When the Heaven's Ward realize that what you intend, they will fly to their master's side, leaving only a token force to guard the jail. Temple Knights loyal to our cause have already secured the entrance to the vault. Once you are within, they will signal to us. If all goes to plan, we shall rejoin you with Sir Emmerich and confront the Archbishop together. Is everyone clear to as to their duties? Then let us do what needs to be done. Alright. Alright. Okay. I'm not I'm not mad about what's about to happen at all. Nope, not at all. Not in the slightest. Thanks, Briar. <laughs> I 
The others are in position, Mistress Kaharu. I will send word once you and your party have entered. Alright, let's go. through this part more times than I care to count, but I usually skip the cutscenes when I play through this part, so I'm gonna hate this because I have to watch it for the stream. <laughs> and Briar's kind of in the same boat as me. It, it might be faster to get in, uh, into Q for ya. Yeah, this, um, this right here should tell you, uh, how we feel about what's about to come, Blackie. Just, just... Tank's gonna go slow. So that should help you, Briar. <laughs> Wait, why are they attacking me? Stop it. I'm not the tank. Don't attack me. You won't. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, I don't want that. <laughs> if you're blind, then how are you watching the stream right now? <laughs> this is actually giving me a good chance to actually look around this area. I didn't realize there was a fountain here. 
Usually people just kind of zoom past through this area and I don't get a really a good chance to just kind of like take it in. But look, there's a fountain! Raya, look, it's Sir Daffodil! It's Sir Daffodil! And I call him Sir Daffodil because I misread his name as Daffodil once, and that's why he's always been to me from then on. That's just what who he is now. He is Sir Daffodil. Ow. I'm about to get, I'm about to get out. Yep, ow. Ow. Neither of those are useful to me. Nope. Excuse me while I quickly sneak in here for a treasure copper. Uh, that is still useless to me. Chest, 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 Useless! Here we go. That was just rude. Into the elevator! This part is beautiful. This part of the dungeon is absolutely beautiful.
But is, 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 is Tank okay? Poor tank. you to pieces! Back you. There we go. Ah! No, so you're no bad. I will not yield to you! Go to your corner. Go to the timeout corner. Now you're just having a temper tantrum. Damn it, Blackie. <laughs> oh, oh god. Down with you. Remember to keep away from the edges, Briar. <laughs> well, as best you can, anyway. about to do the backflip thing anyway, so you kind of helped me there. <laughs> My axe is cooler. <laughs> Got him. Hey! That is a dumbass hat. None of these I need.
lucky I had to. I could have needed that. Eh, oh well. Can't even have good jokes on this goddamn stream. <laughs> Gargoyles. Shouts, um, the sickness must be purged. Hey, filthy rats. Time that nicely to avoid the AoEs. Oh, oh god, I'm chained. Ow. I'm okay. <laughs> I did not enjoy the chain. Sickness must be purged. Ah, there's the sickness must be purged. But, oh. Uh, and now the final cut. DPS check. Right. Oh god. Good to stand there, and then he decided to throw rings of fire under my feet. And he decided to chain me as well. That's just wonderful, isn't it? Sickness must be purged. Shut up, Shivert. Only half right. <laughs> Sickness must be purged. Got him. Mm. 
That's what you get? Oh. I didn't want either of those, but thank you, I guess. Alright, who's ready to suffer? Who's ready to suffer? Raise your hand. <laughs> uh. Oh, power! How can this be? Hold back! Who's ready to suffer because I'm not? You don't, but Briar and I do. Father, please. <laughs> You're not here for the plot. We were not too late, my friend. <laughs> what are you here I for, then, Blackie? This, what are you here for, then, Blackie? Nidhogg is fallen. There is no need for further deception. Now is the time to renounce the lies which led us down this path. To start anew! <laughs> okay. Okay. And tear down the very pillars of our society, our history, our values, everything we have built over a thousand years. A fool to the last. Oh, oh, here it comes. Here it comes. Look out! Go, as Isla awaits. Lord Orshafon! You are unharmed. Forgive me. I could not bear the thought of... of... Oh, do not look at me so. A smile better suits a hero. was coming and it still hurts oh 
Oh my god. Ugh. I hate it. Briar, I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. I I know not what to say. The others they they are gathered at Fortown Manor. Oh, oh! Give her all the snugs, Briar. <laughs> Give her all the snugs. Watching too. Oh. oh, give her all the hugs, Briar. Oh no. The others are. Please enter, Mr. Sorrel. Please. A knight lives to serve, to protect, to sacrifice. There is no greater calling. Leave me to mourn and give chase for my son and for the nation he loved. Go. I accidentally skipped the last word, that's okay. His sacrifice shall not be forgotten. By son. Look, I'll go back inside. There, there's your favorite boy. <laughs> Are you happy now? stand there in silence, but when all the others had forsaken us, Lord Horshafont took us in, our beacon of hope in a world of darkness. He did his utmost to raise our spirits so that we might face our troubles with courage, with conviction. That we might face them as, as knights. I, we must press on with our mission to Taru. Wait. We must press on with our mission. Tataru, pray return to your duties of the Forgotten Knight. Oh, hello. Thank you for that shot. <laughs> Random person. <laughs> Let us go speak with Sir Emmerich Kaharu. I worry for his well-being. Yes, that that is my, uh, that is my bunny. <laughs> That uh, macro I have uh, that I use at the end of dungeons. Briar, why did you slap me? <laughs> why did you slap me, Briar? <laughs> it's because I, I made you ensure ensure the Horsha font death, isn't it? Emmerich, I'm upset.
My friends, I am in your debt. Think nothing of it. Your wounds are healing well, I trust. Some oh wounds God. do not heal. Oh god, not this again. The Founding. The Scriptures, a thousand years of lies, all to deceive the common man. Nay, our own brothers and sisters. For the blood of the Knights Twelve flows within all our veins. You knew this to be true. You knew, and you concealed it. I should be interested to hear how you came by this knowledge. But yes, you have the right of it. The architects of Ishgard, King Thordan and his knights twelve, entrapped and butchered the great worm, Ratatoske, that they might partake of her eyes and thereby transcend their mortal limits. Upon learning of their treachery, Nidhogg was consumed with a murderous and justified rage. I dare say you know what followed. The Great Worm slew the king and half of his knights. Aye, but Nidhogg was subdued, and his eyes plucked from their sockets by the knights that remained. Their one mistake was to show mercy. For from his brother Hreisvelge did Nidhogg receive a new eye, thus rejuvenating his form and empowering him to embark upon an eternal quest for vengeance. Whilst Thordan's son Haldreth took one of Nidhogg's eyes and learned to wield its power in defense of his people. Thus was the first Azure Dragoon born, and ever since that time, his honored successors have risen to drive Nidhogg from our lands whenever the worm has returned to plague us. I ask you, my son, will you answer for my sins? Will your son and his son answer for me as well? What do you mean? If a man cannot atone for his sins in the course of his all too fleeting life, must his progeny then be held to account? Must every subsequent generation be judged as well? Thorin's betrayal of Ratatoska was an unconscionable, unforgivable sin. Should we then, as his descendants, meekly surrender ourselves to an eternity of punishment. Nay, say I, I would not see our children sacrificed in a vain attempt to appease an implacable foe. Well, f well the son shouldn't be blamed for the father's sins at all, to be fair, because it wasn't the son that committed the sins. Dragons are not like us, my son. To they who live forever, the wrongs of antiquity are as those of yesterday. No reparations shall ever suffice. This fact alone should serve as ample justification for our actions. Yet some refuse to see it as such. For men like you, who yearn to commit themselves to a nobler cause, a more compelling narrative is required. This is your solution. This is how you protect our people. It's not really protect protecting them. Well, that is true, but you have to remember they don't exactly understand that that's that they have the power of the eyes, and because of that, they don't really see, they don't understand that to trigger that power, they have to drink dragon's blood. They don't know what power they have locked within them. That's the thing. You have given us a lost cause, a death sentence, with your compelling narrative. 
You but doom our countrymen to give their lives for a lie. And the other point of this, th they are in an endless battle of rage and hate and blood. It is a cycle with no end, and unless we somehow, and unless, and unless we somehow manage to find a way to break this cycle, it will continue on until one or both sides are completely obliterated. Well, yes, Thoradin and his knights 12 know, but the rest of Ishgard, the rest of Ishgard has no idea. <laughs> and they do so gladly. Highborn and lowborn alike are proud to serve, to fight and die for their country. Well, Thornton and his Knights 12, and now the Warrior of Light, Stinian, Amaric, they are aware of, of what had happened and are aware of why this started. The rest of Ishgard is not. They have no idea what's going on, why, the, why they're actually fighting this war, and it's just an, an endless battle of bloodshed, of bloodshed and hate and anger. And what would you say to them? What would you tell the wives who have lost their husbands? The mothers who have lost their sons? That their loved ones died for naught? I... Uh... Over the course of a thousand years, countless men have donned these robes, and every one of them came to accept the necessity of this solution. Once, I hoped you might come to accept it as well. Do not despair, my son. Soon I shall free us from the sins of antiquity. No, you won't. And bring about the change you so fervently desire. I know what change you want, and I don't like it. Go to hell, please. If he has spoken with others, I would have their names. Escort him to a cell and question him. Thoroughly. Your Eminence. Nope. I'll wipe that smug grin off your face, Grino. You saw something, did you not? A vision of the past? So this is the power of the Echo. Would that it had shown you a finer moment from my past. T'was an exercise in futility, as you saw. Faced with the firmity of his conviction and his many ready rejoinders, my words deserted me. To be frank, I am embarrassed to recall it. A friend once impressed upon me the importance of differentiating between words, deeds, and beliefs. Were he here, I suspect he would judge your father's conviction to be no more than rank, self-serving delusion. <laughs> Even so, I cannot help but wonder what manner of change he intends to bring about. Boop, Dorian. I have given some thought to that as well. During the battle within the vault, the Heaven's Ward demonstrated strange and unnatural abilities. Thanks for, uh, thanks for staying and chatting uh, with us for a bit, Korat. <laughs> Aye, the manner in which Sir Zephyrin struck down Lord Horshafon was unlike anything I've ever seen before. The spectacle called to mind King Thordon and his Knights Twelve as they are depicted in scripture. 
holy powers and all. Heaven's Word, I have to admit, is a very, very good story. It, it is a brilliant story. Like, if you, if you, if you can slog through a Realm Reborn and post a Realm Reborn and get to Heaven's Word, please, please do it. The story is so good. Oh, you, we could definitely argue about everything that happens in Heaven's Word for days. <laughs> Mere fabrications, which have become objects of faith. Instilled with the belief of countless devoted souls. Seven hells! If Lady Iceheart can use her own body as a vessel for summoning, I see no reason why others could not. Are the Heaven's Ward truly so reckless? Unbelievable! As they fled, my father spoke of Aziz La. That he did. Though I know not what he intends, I fear no good shall come of it. His ambitions are too great, and his minions too powerful. We must find the Heaven's Ward, and stop my father before it is too late. Mistress Oro, Master Alphano, I, Amerik, Lord Commander of the Temple Knights of Ishgard, do hereby entreat the aid of the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. Our aid in preventing whatever it is the, that the Archbishop intends? Yep, yep, that's Astinian. Your aid in bringing him to justice. No, too much blood has been spilled for the lies he perpetrated. No more. Life or death, I shall house Sir Zephyrin's heart for what he did to Horshafont. That is the only correct option! Yes, yes, of course. You two are close. I know. You <laughs> best buy a fountain, so I should have thrown him in. <laughs> Much has changed since our order's founding, but our duty to combat the primal threat has not. If the Archbishop and the Heaven's Ward are guilty of the crime of summoning, then Kaharu and I will stop them. Would that I could join you in, in the pursuit, but alas, my father's absence have, has thrown our government into chaos. Ever since the founding of our nation, there has been an archbishop to share. To, <laughs> there has been an archbishop to serve as a guiding light for the masses, a force for stability to counterbalance the high house's ceaseless maneuvering. Convincing the people to recognize the truth of our origins would have been difficult even with my father's support. The road ahead is that much more fraught with peril without it. Yet walk it we must, for unity is more vital to our survival than ever. After all, Nedhog's death did not mark the cessation of the Devonian hostilities. Far from it. We still- we will have great need for each other in the days to come. You may ever count on my land, Sir Emmerich. To my dying oath, I shall defend Ishgard from the Horde. If I may, Lord Commander, I would like to assist the, the Scions in their search for the Archbishop. Kaharu, Master Alphano, pray, attend me outside. Very well. With me, Kaharu. I believe we have much to discuss. I, I don't think uh, we can throw Istinian in the fountain, Blackie. He's, he's just gonna stay that way. The Solel was east was eastward bound, so I sent I sent word to Camp Cloudtop on the off track on the off chance the airship passed nearby. Sure enough, Lady Leniane informed me that it had been sighted by her scouts. Then the Archbishop is somewhere in the Sea of Clouds. Or was, not long ago, the airship has not been has not been seen since it disappeared into the northern region reaches near the blue window. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we can get him close enough to a river, sure. 
Alas, because the region is firmly held by the Banu Vanu and not easily accessible from Camp, Camp Cloudtop, House Hiliarne has yet to establish a, foot, a foothold. We'll, we'll need not only an airship, but a captain bold enough to risk the Beastman's wrath. I think we know somebody like that! I think we both know the perfect candidate, Kaharu. Let us pay a visit to Master Garland at the Sky Steel Manufactory. I see that I will take my leave for now. There are other matters which require my attention. Sid! Sid! Sid, 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 Sid! Don't ask me why I'm, st I'm still just running instead of using the ethernet. This is just what I do. <laughs> this is what I've always done. Sid, 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 Sid. Yeah. Deal with that later. Sid! Sid, 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 Sid. Sid, sit, 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 You haven't heard, have you? I hardly know where to start. He was a good man. Sid, have you ever heard of Az's Law? The Archbishop spoke of it before you fled. No, but it's probably some... Some source of phenomenal cosmic power that's key to his plans. From what he told Kaharu, the Asians tried to tempt him as they tempted Gaius with the Ultima weapon. Even if he spoke true about playing along, I can see him attempting to seize it. As if we need another reason to pursue him. Well, I'm convinced. The Enterprise is at your disposal. Come to the airship landing when you're ready to depart. It's just as well. After putting, pulling you out of the fire these last few times, I reckoned I was due to deliver, to deliver you into it. been streaming for three and a half hours and I think this will be a, a good point to kind of uh, end the stream. <laughs> Second favorite character next to the nameless NPC in the Fort John Manor. Try to do an all day stream up until midnight my time on New Year's Eve. We shall see. <laughs> it was love at first sight. <laughs> You're welcome, Briar. <laughs> Have fun being trapped on Kaharu's home server. But. <laughs> Sure, sure, Blackie, go ahead. <laughs> but, uh, as I was saying, I might attempt to do a, an... <laughs> uh, sure, <laughs> why not? <laughs> Um, anyway, um, I might attempt to do an all-day stream on, on, um, New Year's Eve up until midnight my time or a little bit, or a little bit past that. 
Um, we'll see if I'm if I'm busy or if I'm act or if I'm feeling up to it or if I have the energy to. But for now, um, thank you for joining me. Thank you for suffering with me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, thank you for. Yes, we shall have to spoop sometime. Thank you for everyone who joined me. Thank you for everyone who chatted with me. Thank you to everyone who watches the video afterward. And I will see you in the next stream.